Bye, Marley. Be a good dog while I'm gone. I will be back soon. I just gotta go to the shop and get some tools. Marley, I'm home. Let's see. Marley, come here. Marley? We're gonna have to make you something to open the door when I'm gone. It's okay. Why, hello, lovely humans. Jen Foxbot here. In this episode, we are gonna be building a dog door opener to help our favorite furry friends have more accessibility in our homes. To do that, we're gonna be using a micro bit along with the Binary Bots Totem Spider Kit. We'll use the motor, the motor controller, and the micro bit to pull open a door, and we'll use parts and pieces from the binary bots kit to build a mechanical mechanism that allows us to push our foot down, or our paws, and uh, use that to trigger the motor to pull open the door. All right, let's get started and build our project. To build this project, we will need these tools. The first thing we're gonna build is what I'm calling a latch cover. We're gonna take a piece of aluminum from a recycled can and cut a strip that's about three inches long by one inch wide. And set it aside and we are gonna move on to part two. Next, we are going to make the door mechanism part. This is the piece that our motor is going to attach to via a fishing line. So when the motor winds in one direction, it's gonna pull the fishing line and this part will be attached to the door and the fishing line so that it actually pulls the door open. We will need these pieces from the Binary Bots kit. The next part that we're going to make for our dog door opener is the motor mount. So for this, we fortunately can use the exact same setup that the binary bot spider kit uses. So we're going to, the only thing we're really gonna tweak is where the motor is located. So if it is helpful, you can actually follow the mechanical instructions in the binary bots instruction kit to install the motor into the motor mount and then just take this 100 by 100 piece and attach it in approximately the middle. We will need these pieces from the Binary Bots kit plus six small nails and one push pin. Let's get started. The last hardware piece that we need to build is our foot or our paw switch. So the way that we're gonna build this is we're going to use more parts from the Binary Bots kit. It's really handy to have all of these mechanical pieces that we can build with. So we're gonna make a switch that is rigid on one end that separates these 200 by 30 millimeter grid pieces and that is freely floating on the other end so that when you press down or if you have this mounted on the wall or on the floor when you push down it makes the switch closed and you can see these two pieces of wire will be connected to these conductive bits of um, metal and the bolt and the nuts. This is something that is completely separate from what is in the Binary Bots kit. So we'll walk through this piece by piece. And of course, please reach out if you have any questions, leave a comment in the video and I'll get back to you. To start, let us attach these nylon standoffs to the bottom. Now we are going to take the longer part of the wire and sandwich it between one of the M3 nuts and the bolt. I would recommend wrapping the wire around the bolt a few times.
Now we're going to make the electrical connections. For the motor controller, you will need these parts. So we have two wires for our switch. It doesn't matter where we connect which wire to the part of the board. All that matters is that one goes to pin P0 and the other wire goes to ground. Wrap it around so that the metal part of the wire touches the metal part of the board. Let's attach the motor. The positive side of the motor connection goes on the left motor one slot and the black wire goes on the right pin. Now you can add in your batteries and we can move on to the coating. Now we get to do the software bit of our hardware project, yes. Cool, so take your micro bit. I also would recommend a longer micro USB cable just to make your life easier. So plug in the micro USB cable to your micro bit and then plug in the micro bit to a USB port on your computer. Our computer reads the micro bit just like a USB device. And so to get the code on the micro bit, we go to makecode.org. There we go, not .com. So makecode.com takes us to this webpage, which we were just at. We're gonna click on the micro bit. Makes sense, because we're doing a micro bit project. Click on new project. And then I like to retitle the code so that I know what the heck I'm looking at. And I'm gonna call this dog door project. Woo, yay. Okay, so. Now we are going to pull code blocks out onto our micro bit to turn the DC motor in one direction, wait a certain amount of time, and then we are going to unspool the motor for the same amount of time so that way we can close the door after the dog or other furry creature leaves the room. We are also going to add a couple of extra backup options so in case the fishing line isn't quite working or doing its trick, if you push a certain button on the micro bit, we will spool the motor or make it tighter. And if we push another button, we'll unspool the motor. So let's get started.
now that we have our software code, let's do a quick test before we install and realize that we did something wrong. So to do this, we'll insert the micro bit into the motor driver and definitely put it in so that the buttons are facing out. Took me a second to figure this out. And if everything is still connected from when we hooked it up previously, then we should be able to test and go. So let's see if it works. Here we go. Okay. All right, it's counting down. There we go. All right. Pretty cool. So it's hard to tell what it's doing at the moment, but the motor is turning. And so hopefully once we attach it to the door, it'll be able to pull the fishing line tight. So that was our switch. And then we have our door open button. It will pull the fishing line tight for one second. And then our door closed, which will let it go for one second. And then holding these, both of them should turn the motor off immediately. Cool, there we go. Let's install and have our puppers tested. Yay! All right, the first thing we need to do is install the latch mechanism or the cover for the latch mechanism so that that way the door doesn't, well, latch closed when we actually shut the door. So to do that, we just need our piece of aluminum foil and to make this removable so that you actually can close the door when you want to, I'm just using some wall sticky putty. And then what we'll do is we'll attach it on one side and then bend it so that it covers the latch, but still allows the latch to kind of pop out. So let me see if I can kind of get it to crease here. Cool. So now this way, the latch will be prevented from sticking into the uh, other side of the door. Next, let's install the door mechanism. Take your handy dandy pencil and mark where it's going to go. Okay. And then we get our hot glue gun and we want this to be removable. So just add a smidgen of hot glue and then Hold the door mechanism in place for a few seconds while the hot glue dries. And then take your hot glue gun and on the other side, we're gonna add a little bit of hot glue to hold this perpendicular piece in place. Try not to get hot glue on your hands because that will not be very fun. Just squish it into the door. And this will help to stabilize our door mechanism. Next, we want to install the motor at about a 45 degree angle from the door in a place that's not gonna get in the way. So since I only have two hands, to do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a push pin to hold up the motor. All right, there we go. And then I'll use one hand to hold up the micro bit. I would recommend marking the wall when you want to install this but I have already done that. Okay, so we're, that's good for the micro bit. Now we need to install the motor mount and this one needs to be secure. So I'd recommend using at least six nails to hold this on. check that it's secure. Now we need to install the boop switch, as I like to call it. So it might be helpful to test a few different places out for your furry friend. I originally was gonna install the switch on the floor and the dog was having kind of a hard time figuring it out. And so I realized that maybe it would be easier for the dog to boop it with his nose. <laughs> I opted to go with a less permanent solution, just using the wall sticky putty to adhere it to the wall. So one, of, one of the benefits of that is that I don't need to hammer in nails into the wall. It's a lot easier to install. And if I decide that I wanna move it or do something different, I can easily take it off. Cool, so once we have our switch on the wall, then we need to do a little bit of wire organization. And to do this, I just use some push pins. Push pins. 
pin up at the top and then did a little bit of wire wrapping around the push pin to make the wires nice and tight. We do not want the switch to accidentally trigger. And then I used a couple of push pins on the wall to hold the wires against the wall. That's a little crooked, so we adjust that a little bit. There we go. Ta-da! And finally, we get to attach the motor to the door so that when the motor spins, it reels in the door and opens the door. Huzzah! So take the fishing line or dental floss, whatever you prefer to use, and make sure that it reaches your door mechanism and is tight. You can even play a little bit of music here. <laughs> so then wrap the fishing line around the door mechanism. Hopefully you have a, enough length to get it around a few times. And then being very careful, take your hot glue and just glue it on down. If you're super good with knots, you can also tie a knot, but to be honest, this was way easier for me to do as I held this down. We successfully made a dog door opener using the micro bit and parts and pieces from the Binary Bots spider kit. Yes, I'm so excited because now I can leave my house and I'm not worried about my dog trapping himself inside a tiny room without any food or water. So I hope that you find this project useful. Something that I might change in the future would be to add a delay for the switch mechanism so that when my dog triggers it, if he accidentally triggers it a couple of times in a row, it doesn't open the door multiple times in the row. So maybe like a delay of a minute or something like that. And then the other thing I think would be really interesting to figure out would be how to design a latch mechanism or maybe something to pull the door handle down. So that's actually a really interesting question for you. How might you design a latch mechanism for this type of project? Or alternatively, I am really curious as to how you might adapt this project for different types of accessibility needs. What could you use this for and how would you design your project? See you next time, bye.